do nas nije. Ne čekamo nikoga da povrijedimo. Čekamo samo da odbranimo. Mislim da je to naše pravo. Ipak smo crnogorci. Želimo svoju crnogorsku pravostavnu crku. A mislim, to je smešno. Oni su smešni. A ne mogu li nas da se ostane? Nemanja! It was a wild weekend in Montenegro. Protesters tried to stop the inauguration of the new head of the country's Serbian Orthodox Church. But they couldn't do it. The ceremony went ahead with the help of the military. The controversial Bishop Ionikia II was flown straight to Cetinje Monastery under the protection of police special forces. Inside, everything went according to plan. But outside was chaos. Protesters clashed with the police who fired tear gas. 37 people were injured, among them seven policemen. 14 people were arrested and the roads were blocked for almost two days. I'm Mirjana Miladinović and I'm trying to find out how a religious enthronement ended a bloodshed. In order to do that, I first had to attend the welcoming ceremony for the Serbian Orthodox Patriarch from Belgrade, who arrived in Montenegro's capital Podgorica on Saturday. I'm in front of the church here in Podgorica, capital, where people have welcomed the Patriarch of Serbian Orthodox Church. I came here to see what brought them here. There were loads of Serbian flags, hats and t-shirts, and people were chanting things that weren't actually connected to church. Treba da vlada mir, ne treba da se mrzimo, ne treba da se dijelimo politički, nego se dijelimo na ljude i na neljude, a ne politički da se dijelimo. Žao mi je, nekim je Bogu pomoć. Ne damo svetinje, svetinje ćemo braniti sa svojim životom. Trebamo da poštojemo i katoličku i proslavnu i crnogorsku, ako imaju crnogorsku za crkvu, izvolite, napravite, niko vam neće smetati, a vjera mora se poštovati, sva će je vjera. After waiting all day, the crowd was excited to hear from the Serbian patriarch. Kako čeznemo i želimo iz sveg srca, iz dubine, svoje duše da u miru i u ljubavi Hristovoj zagrlimo onu našu braću koja su nam najbliža, koja su nam rođena, a koja danas nas ovde sabrane na ovom skupu ili ne prepoznaju ili ne priznaju za svoju braću. The Patriarch asked the crowd if they were happy to install Ioniki as the head of Montenegro's Serbian Orthodox Church. And with that, the decision was made. So my next stop was Cetinje. Cetinje is a tiny city, but as the former royal capital, it's the heart of Montenegrin identity. Meanwhile, the Serbian Orthodox Church is a refuge for those who say that Montenegro is a nation does not exist and that they are all Serbs. When Montenegro lost independence in 1918 and became one country with Serbia, all churches became Serbian Orthodox. When Montenegro regained independence almost a century later, the churches remained Serbian. 
That's not a problem for about half the population who think that's the way things should be. But for other half, it is. And right here, some 30 kilometers away from Podgorica, completely different scene. Orthodox Montenegrins gathered here and won't let pass representatives of Serbian Orthodox Church to get the inauguration here in Cetinje Monastery. Every entrance to the city was barricaded. Here I got the feeling that a conflict was about to happen and Montenegrins were ready for it. So I decided to spend the night there at the barricades to talk to some of them while I had the chance. There were people who had walked six hours from Podgorica just to be there. Moralo je doći do toga, ali oni ne žele mir, oni žele krv. To su pokazali mnogo puta do sad, tako da jednostavno do nas nije. Mi večeras ovdje ne čekamo nikoga da povrijedimo, čekamo samo da odbranimo. Mislim da je to naše pravo. Ipak smo crnogorci, želimo svoju crnogorsku pravoslavnu crkvu. Listening to the plans here, I felt like I was watching some old western movie, like a showdown was on the horizon. Things had been mostly peaceful until a law was passed in 2019 that stated all churches within Montenegro's borders belong to the state of Montenegro. Orthodox Serbs began protests across the country, demanding authorities to withdraw the law. Then the party that had ruled Montenegro for three decades lost elections. The new government, which had campaigned on repealing the law, did as they had promised as soon as they were in power. So the country ended up with the Prime Minister, Zdravko Krivokapic, who supports the Serbian Orthodox Church, and the President, Milo Djukanovic, who wants to help the Montenegrin Church gain back its independence. Sunday morning, inauguration day, and plans to block the ceremony were taking shape. But of course, the police were making plans as well. They came to a main barricade together with fire trucks, police vans and excavators to let the protesters think they will try to break the barricade. But police didn't break that barricade. They decided to transport priests via military helicopter and they breached the weakest point at the other entrance and got into the city where the fighting began. So the people who were gathered here set the tires on fire to block the police and they all went to the city center. And I followed. We will see what will happen here in the next few hours. I think it won't be actually easy uh, to be there. It's actually right now very, very hard to breathe. Uh, first injuries reported, so that's, that's just it for now. I, I have to go now. It ended like no one wanted, with the country even more divided. And Montenegrins promise they struggle won't end here, that it has only just begun. No one knows when or how this conflict can be resolved. But all know that after this weekend, the divisions are deeper than ever before. Mirjana Miladinović, TRT World, Cetinje, Montenegro.